Welcome to Informatica Video KB Series. My name is Abhijit. Today we are going to learn about the Informatica Cloud REST API. The Informatica Cloud REST API enables us to be able to access information and perform functions on the Informatica Cloud org without having to manually log in using the browser to the Informatica Cloud org. Quite a few resources on Informatica Cloud are REST API enabled. A few of these resources are the run job resource, which does a post request on the Informatica Cloud REST API and runs a job. The login resource, which again does a post request and creates a secure session and provides a secure session ID, this Informatica Cloud session ID. We have the activity log resource, which can do a get request on the Informatica Cloud REST API and then get the activity log for any Informatica Cloud org. The Informatica Cloud REST API is request and response based meaning when we are sending the request to the Informatica Cloud REST API, for example, the run job of a particular task, the REST API will send us a response from the system telling if the task or the function has been successful or not. This response is either in JSON or XML format. Because of this request response architecture, we are able to programmatically monitor execute and take decisions based on our request and responses on Informatica Cloud and use it for myriad of different functions. In this video, we will see the demo of a batch file which is watching a folder for a particular file and then if the file gets created, it triggers a task on Informatica Cloud. The flat file is being created by an Informatica Cloud task which is reading from SQL Server our data warehouse and writing to a shared location on this machine. On Informatica Cloud, we would see that this particular task reading from SQL Server to flat file is running every 5 minutes, picking up changes on SQL Server and then populating on the CSV file. On this machine, we have a Windows scheduler which is running our batch file every 1 minute and the batch file then goes ahead and checks the directory and then triggers a task if needed. Let's go ahead and see the whole thing in action. So this is the Informatica Cloud interface, my org. Let's have a look at our first task. This guy reads from SQL Server and writes to a shared location on this machine. This task is scheduled for every five minutes so that it picks up changes every five minutes from SQL Server based on any the timestamp of last modified date on SQL Server and then create a target file. The next job is reading from this particular flat file, local flat file, and then performing an upsert on salesforce.com. Let's quickly have a look at that guy. We will see that we have an external ID populated there and we will also see that we have a post processing command to delete the target flat file created by our SQL Server to flat file job. If we go to the field mapping, we would see that our external ID is mapped. These are our external ID field, which will decide the update or insert. This is the upsert external ID field. We have the billing CD populated. This is the change that we will be doing on this for this demo. Otherwise, we can map any other fields that we want. Let's have a look at the schedule. On the schedule, we have a delete for the target file that is created by our SQL Server to flat file job. And we have the upsert field name populated for the external ID needs to be used for the upsert. The delete is important here because if the file does not get deleted, our batch file, which is getting triggered every one minute, will trigger this task on Informatica Cloud incorrectly. So we need to do a cleanup and let the file be only created by our SQL Server to flat file task. Now let's have a look at our batch file. Our batch file is created on this particular directory filewatch.bat. Let's have a quick look at that guy. Here is the guy. So this batch file is pretty simple. What it does is first it checks if a file doesn't exist. And if it doesn't, it exists out of the command. If the file exists, it executes the REST API resource, the REST API command on Informatica Cloud. Now to execute or do a post or a GET request on the Informatica Cloud REST API, we can use any programming language that can do an HTTP request, a post or a GET request to a web service URL. Programming languages like Java, VB.NET or normal Windows script can be used. In our case, to go ahead and perform the, res the request to the Informatica Cloud web services, we are using the curl utility. 
The curl utility is freeware and it is bundled along with the secure agent install. The secure agent installs it under the agent install directory, main, tools and then curl. If you don't want to install uh, the secure agent on a machine from which you want the batch file to be triggered, we can go ahead and install curl or download the binaries from the curl website curl.hxx.se. As we can see, it mentions the curl is a command line tool for transferring data with URL syntax. In our case, the URL, the data is basically the request sent to the Informatica Cloud RESTful web services. Let's have a look at the whole command once. First, we trigger the curl.exe. This command is currently commented out. This is needed if the machine from which the request is made is behind a firewall. Sorry, if it is behind a proxy. And if it is behind a proxy, we need to mention the proxy host name here, colon, the proxy port number. The curl command is this. This is a normal curl command. This is the first curl syntax. The request in our case is the post because of the run job API. This is the response of the Informatica Cloud REST API. We are writing the result to a file called as runjob.xml. And these are the whole parameters which will at the end of the day trigger the job. This is the base URL which will be the base for every resource call to Informatica Cloud REST API. The resource in our case is a run job API followed by the parameters for username for the Informatica Cloud org, the password for the Informatica Cloud org, the job name, the job type DSS for data synchronization for data replication DRS etc. The response type of the REST API request is an XML. Here we would see that we have put some plus signs beside each of the words of our task name. The reason for that is our task on Informatica Cloud has spaces between each of the words for curl to be able to send a request with spaces to the Informatica Cloud API we need to denote it with plus symbols. This may be different for different applications that you are using to send the request across. So here we go. This is our batch file. Let's have a look at the Windows scheduler. So this is the Windows scheduler which is running the job every one minute. The job being the batch file. Let's have a look at it. The trigger is it will run every one minute indefinitely. The action it will trigger the file underscore watch dot bat. Let's go ahead and see the whole thing in action. First of all, let's verify what's going to be changed on salesforce.com. Let's go ahead and have a look at our data on SFDC for the account. This is my salesforce.com org. I've been logged out. Just one minute. Let's go ahead and have a look at our accounts. The account that has changed on my data warehouse is this guy. As we can see that the data that has changed is the billing city. Let's go ahead and see. First, we will execute the job on Informatica Cloud, the data synchronization job for SQL Server, let it pick up changes, and then let the other job run. We have triggered the job. Should be here any minute. Here we go. As soon as the file gets created, we would see this guy here. Here we go. The file has been created. This is all very real time. So if we go to activity log, we would see this trigger. Let's go to activity monitor. And in a, any minute now, we should see our task triggered on Informatica Cloud as well using the batch file that we are using to run our task using the REST API. runs every minute so let's give it a minute here we go the job has been triggered with the Windows scheduler because the file is present and everything the processing is over one row here the file has been deleted from here so that the rest API does not trigger the job again and again until the DSS task runs here we have one success let's see on Salesforce here we go and we see California has been populated. So this was a demo of how we can use the Informatica Cloud REST API to be able to execute tasks on the Informatica Cloud org without ever having to log into the org manually and then execute a task. This is a very powerful tool to, so that we can use Java or other programming languages to do most of the real-time processing that we want on Informatica Cloud. 
for example if this whole process that we just saw can also be used for an FTP process. For example, if we are getting a file from an FTP service to a shared location or a remote location, we can have a file watcher, the same batch file implemented there, which will wait for the file to be present. As soon as the file comes, the file will be processed to salesforce.com or whatever other endpoints you might have. And finally, the file would get deleted and the whole system is ready for sync once again. A few of the things we need to know about the Informatica Cloud REST API are the XML schema definition. As mentioned, the Informatica Cloud REST API will be sending a response in XML or JSON format. For the XML format, we can use the XSD to be able to parse these XML messages and then process them downstream if we want to do any programmatic decisions based on these responses. The URL for the XSD is mentioned here. We have the Informatica Cloud REST API test page. Now the test page will give us the information about all the resources and also help us to test our Informatica Cloud REST API calls outside of a batch file on Informatica Cloud first and then ensure that it works fine. Let's have a look at this guy once. So here is the API test page. So these are the different REST API calls that can be made. The login call for getting the response type being the session ID which can be used for different functionalities. These are the parameters that need to be used for each of these uh, different uh, REST API resources. As we can see, let go, let's go to our example that was the run job API. As we can see, the run job API has a response type of XML. We did XML in our case. The username or password and the job ID can be populated. We can mention the job type or and the job name. In our use, case we are using username password job name and job type if if we do the login call and get the informatica cloud session id we can use that to be populated here and then go ahead and execute the task on informatica cloud there are a lot of different ways that we can go ahead and use the informatica cloud rest api as informed uh, our base for all the resource calls is this. This will be followed by the resource that we are trying to call on Informatica Cloud REST API. Please go ahead and use the Informatica Cloud REST API and let us know how you feel. If you have any feedback about this particular video, you can contact us on supportvideos at informatica.com. You can also follow us on our Twitter handle at InfaSupport. Thanks a lot for your time. Have a good day.